Hello, I'm Greg Reike of Reike Mods, and have you ever wondered if you could make the world's crappiest Intel-based Mac server out of OS X Server Leopard and an Apple TV? Spoiler alert, you can. Let's get to it. Alright, so I've already tried this to make sure it would work, and I want to put a special thanks out to the guys at TinkerDifferent.com who gave me all the information I needed, plus Colin Mister, aka DosDude1, for talking me through how to modify it and make it work properly. We right here have OS X Server Leopard on here, full-fledged on here working and bootable on this Apple TV right here. Now, um, in this video, we'll show you how I put the drive in and all this stuff. In fact, I've just put this thing back to stock to where it was when I got it from its previous owner. And as we look here, it's actually right now running a older copy of XBMC, aka Cody, off of OpenELEC. This is Linux-based. You can run Linux operating systems really easy on an Apple TV. It's literally download the, pro the program and put it on a flash drive, plug it in, it fires right up, which is pretty neat. But I wanted to actually make this into a Mac like everyone else does, but I didn't want to go the easy way. I wanted to do something no one's done before. I wanted to run Mac OS X server on this thing and I managed to do it. So let's actually do it. I already have it formatted here. I call it the Apple TV server drive. And the uh, only thing we gotta do is restart this system. This should hopefully boot into Leopard server installer. And um, then we can start installing everything on this drive. Basically, what you have to do is install the operating system first, fully update it, make it work, and then there's something you have to um, change in it to make it boot up on an Apple TV. I don't think anyone's ever tried Leopard server, so this should be interesting. And as I just hit the hard drive while starting it, oops. Yeah, it seems to be fine right now. So uh, what we'll do is we'll let it install and then we'll uh, come back and see if it's uh, booted up or not. It's setting up its initial setup here. Uh, I think I've typed everything in right. We're going to find out in a minute when the server either A comes online or B doesn't do anything. I wonder what version it installed, because I have no clue what version this is. I was opening up the server thing in the middle of this. Let's see here. That's its vanilla server, so this is going to take a while to update. Oh boy. we got to configure it too, but hey, it's, it's working, so that's a good sign. Well, it managed to install plugged into there. Uh, yeah. Once it was finished uh, installing and booting up and set up and stuff, when I started the updates, the hard drive stopped working. And it's because, for some reason, the port just suddenly decided to stop supplying enough power to it. So now we have the hard drive plugged into another hard drive. This is a iMac dock with a hard drive built into it that uh, I use for a drive reader. And it happens to have USB ports that are powered on it. So now the drive's running happily with plenty enough power. Well, when your crappy PETA reader stops working, you have to improvise. Yeah. Still trying to get this drive to work. Getting close, though. Uh, this is not very graceful, though. 
All right, so we finally got everything installed onto this drive and it's time to install it, so let's do it. Okay, so here is the Apple TV as we see it right here. And if you notice, the bottom sticks out a little bit funny and there's a reason to that. I bought this thing off of eBay and uh, I can't remember, I think it was the cheapest first generation Apple TV on eBay when I bought it like two years ago. And I didn't know anything about it. Apparently the previous owner had upgraded the hard drive in it, really janking mind you, and I'll show you how he put it in. I didn't put it in this way. And he, he upgraded this hard drive. He also installed XBMC, AKA Cody, which is what it's called now, um, over Open Elec. It's got a bunch of songs on it and like three videos. There's like one full movie. That's it. And the funny thing is he put a terabyte drive in this and uh, he didn't even try to make it fit right. He didn't do it in the proper way to do it. And he actually is the one that peeled this base off. So it's, of course, ripped. But you peel the base off. You'll notice the hard drive has no screws for a reason. And we'll get to that. Now, usually when you peel this cover up, you want to be careful not to break something like the hard drive attached to it. But in this case, yeah, yeah, he, he used a SATA hard drive, which was too thick in the first place. This is a one terabyte drive. And this is an old Seagate free play, which uh, was the probably highest capacity hard drive you could get around 2010-ish in this size. But if you notice, it's twice as thick as the hard drive type that's supposed to get with it. This system, of course, uses PETA. And uh, that's, that's, that's not PETA. So uh, he had to improvise to put everything in here. We're going to fix that this time and actually do it correctly. So let's do that. And my original Apple TV to the rescue. I took two screws out the bottom. Two should be enough to hold the original uh, drive in this one. It's not moving, so we've got two screws for this now. Okay. Now it's dirty. Put down the slab of cheese. Okay. The hard drive's on there. It's, I don't think it's going anywhere. So let's put this back in properly. Now, you'll notice there's some dust in here. I'll go back into this thing and clean it up later. But right now, I just want to uh, get this video moving here. And right now, it's, it's working fine, so I think we'll be all right. There we go. It's actually flat now, so it won't bulge out the top anymore and it actually works. So let's plug it in and see if it boots. Okay, so first off, we need to plug in the ports. And uh, actually, I believe I can still get audio out of this. I never tried it. I'm not going to in this video because this is a server video. But uh, to get audio out of OS 10, you need to use these two ports here, which I have an adapter wire over there for that. Um, but other than that, the only thing you need is power, USB, and HDMI. I've got a studio display here that only takes DVI, so we've got a converter here. We've also got the uh, USB cable here and the power cable. And that's all we need right now. This has a built-in uh, hub, which is slow, but will work for now. And then when we start experimenting with drives, we'll, uh, we'll add more with a hub here. So let's plug it up. And of course, these things automatically power on when you plug them in, so let's see what happens. All right, it looks like we are loaded up here, and it's not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination here. 
but it booted up. And let's prove to you that this is actually running off the Apple TV. One gigahertz unknown, 256 megs of RAM. Apple TV, 1,1. It's running OS X server, guys. And if we go over to server admin, which I always forgets right there, we load it up here. And it's still loading. And it's, it's still loading. There we go. <laughs> it thinks it's a Mac Mini. <laughs> but it works. And, uh, yeah, let's let's move you guys in here. We've got it here. It's running the unlimited client. All this stuff. I'm only going to do file serving on this for now. So we've got to set all that up. But first, we will need to plug hard drives into this to make it work. Okay, so I'm going to use this iMac hard drive dock again, which has two built-in powered USB ports and also a side USB port, which the ADC display is plugged into. We'll plug that up, see if it comes up on the desktop. Well, I restarted the system. I can't get the hub on that to work, but I do have an unpowered hub right there, and uh, we'll see if that fixes the problem, although it's going to get really mad when I unplug this. So there is our new network drive that's going to take an eon or two to load i still think that this hub might work the mouse and keyboard just might not work through it so let's try it since it's a powered hub let's try to plug some other stuff into it and see if we can make them work i think this thing needs a good optical drive i don't know if this is going to work but we're going to try uh, i need something to read in it how about the installed disk that actually made it That's not a good sign. It's trying to read it, but I don't know if it's working or not. Well, that's annoying. I don't see the hub working on here. That makes this a lot harder because I wanted to put more than one hard drive on here. And I can't even get the optical drive to read, which means I can't eject it now. Ha! Let me troubleshoot. Well, apparently it's not the Apple TV. The USB ports have died in my iMac dock. Convenient. So I don't know if it's my hub or what. And before you go, why don't you have a powered hub? Um, whoever really needs one? Uh, that That's my, my question for you. Uh, um, I did manage to get the optical drive to work by plugging it into the studio display. The hard drive keeps kicking off. And I think I may be overloading the USB bus already. But now it can actually read disks. I had to change the optical drive out because this one I think draws less power. But it seems to be working fine. Uh, we're going to plug another hard drive in here which will probably overload everything uh, again and I'll have to force it to restart again. But I do want to see the optical drive while we have it in here. There's the optical drive, and it sees it as a disk burner. See if the hard drive's still working. It's definitely not, definitely not a speed demon. There is nothing on this drive right now, but we're just not getting there any time, any way fast. This takes a lot longer than you'd think. All right, so I decided to go back and try to find the plug for this powered hub because, well, it was originally powered, but I can't find it. Don't know where it is. So we've got everything plugged in that is self-powered, uh, except for that optical drive, which actually it's working great now. And um, we've got a hard drive from some MacBook there on this makeshift adapter I've made. And we've also got this hard drive out of, I think it was a Mac Pro or something like that. And it, everything's just working perfectly right now, which means I'll jinx everything in a second. And this hard drive, <laughs> the name on it is dead. It seems to be working fine, so we're going to see if it does when we're uh, doing the network stuff. So uh, 
let's start uh, trying to set up everything for media sharing. So it's been a while since I've set up my XServe, so I'm not sure if I can remember how to do this. So we will see. And I've been testing a few things. That's why there's some programs open here. You'll want to make sure every program you don't need is not open. So uh, let's start with admin. There we go. It's actually reading all of the drives now. We've got an 80 gig internal. And then we've got this 250 and this 320. So that equals out to around 604, uh, five, something like that on here. I'm trying to remember how you share here. There we go. So I need, how do I do this? I don't remember. We've got everything shared on the network now. Now we've got to get a system that's on the network that can see it. And honestly, we may have a little better um, chance of getting everything to work properly if we uh, share this over my Airport Extreme network instead of the Wi-Fi on this because, well, the Wi-Fi is not exactly the greatest on here. So let's, let's try changing the network and seeing if it will let me. This is really starting to look like a crazy science project. We've got the Airport Express plugged in here, which will give us a little stronger Wi-Fi signal and uh, make file transfer possibly a little more reliable. And uh, of course, we've got this right now indexing. And then we've got everything set up here. We are on the network. I'm going to go grab a MacBook and we'll see what happens. OK, so we have a MacBook right here running off a of battery power running mount line. And if we look here, let's zoom you in here. If we look here, we can see the Apple TV. If we right click and get info, it, it actually identifies it as an Apple TV. <laughs> this is just hilarious. Look at that. It's an Apple TV. <laughs> but anyway. Let's see here. Let's see what happens when we click on it. Not connected. Share screen. It means the services are not online. So I forgot to start the services on the Apple TV. They're all live now, and it looks like I might be able to connect now. So let's zoom in here. Hey! All the drives are showing up. It even sees the, oh, this should be interesting. See that thing read there when I click on this. We're doing this over Wi-Fi right now. It's actually seeing the install disk. It's, it's, it's actually doing it. So, my plan here is now, let's transfer some random files and see if it can, and if it does it efficiently, which it probably won't, but uh, let's see. So I was thinking, why don't we try to transfer the files that actually made this thing work, which is an image of um, the bootable Leopard install, uh, which I took files off to make this work on the Apple TV. So we'll make a copy over to this drive, which I just heard activate. It's, it's immediately showing up there. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take a really long time. I wonder if we can multitask and move another one. I highly doubt it says it's going to take 13 minutes to copy. I wouldn't be surprised. And we can see that the network output is starting to update. Let's go back. How do you bog down an Apple TV server really fast? Let's go to this dead drive and copy the same file. And it shows up there. 
That dead drive might be dead. It's not writing anything yet. It gives you the general idea this is working. And mind you, this MacBook is not plugged into anything. There's nothing plugged into it. There's not a dock. There's not anything. It's just transferring files wirelessly. And uh, yeah, I think either the Apple TV is not happy or that drive that is called dead is dead. We may be sharing a different drive, but this still gives you the neural idea. Let's cancel that transfer. I want to see some activity monitor if it loads it. Wow, that's, that's bad. It's honestly barely using any CPU. It is using all of the RAM except for 10 megs. It has received 1.4 gigs so far. And it is still receiving stuff. I think the dead drive actually is dead, even though it was working when I tested it. It's not a big deal. That one is still copying over. But it is slowing down significantly, I think. This battery is going to be dead before it transfer this, transfers the file. This is interesting, to say the least. You know, I wonder what would happen if I shut off the dead drive, if it would freak out. It's definitely not going to be happy to do it. But I want to see what it does. So, shut off the dead drive. The Apple TV still hasn't realized that it has disconnected. Okay, then. I do want to try it with a different drive, but uh, it's still copying over. This is not what I'd uh, run a business on. <laughs> this is not fast at all. In fact, this is so painfully slow. Um, my G4 Xserve can actually uh, do this a lot quicker over Wi-Fi. It spun the drive up, but okay, it's starting to read it. It's really, really, really slow. Basically, this thing can only write at, per one drive. Multiple drives, you're, you're going to bottleneck something. I would say it's because it's running out of RAM. It's trying its hardest. We're only connected at 6 megs. It finally realized that that one drive is missing, but it's still trying to do something with it. Yeah. Uh, wow. Oh boy, this is slow. Should have probably copied over a smaller file. Ah, uh, yeah. I still find it hilarious, though, that this sees it literally as an Apple TV. That is a picture of an Apple TV. It is literally transferring to this Apple TV over the network. And, I mean, it's, it's definitely not fast, but it's, it's, it's doing something. Probably going to jinx it, but I want to actually disconnect this drive if it doesn't freeze. It transferred. It finally noticed that was missing. It finally noticed that was missing. Let's try to get this one back online. Get the dead drive going. See if it pops back up on the network. It might help to actually also. There we go. Dead's online. Let's try to mount this image. That is the image that helped me get this thing to work. So, yeah, it's it's it, it's it's a functional file server as long as you're only using one computer at a time, one drive at a time, because then it uh, 
tries to start freaking out here. See if it reconnects. There it goes. And it's not seeing the other drive anymore on the network, but it's still working here. We can even do this. We can go back into test. And there's the file right there. Let's trash it. Delete. It's gone. That is pretty impressive. I am pretty darn impressed that this thing hasn't completely locked up trying to do things. So I guess that's a win. I don't know if I'd call that much of a win, but hey, it's, it's doing something. So we'll shut this one down and we'll wrap up the video. And I actually have some more ideas for this in the future, but right now, it's pretty good the way it is, so. I don't know what to say. This has been a fun project. It was nerve-wracking trying to get the drive to work. I actually messed up the install at least once. Um, almost had it booted and deleted the wrong command to delete things. Deleted every extension in the install. Uh, so I had to completely redo it again, which was not fun because my external reader had broke at the time. So yeah, it was, uh, I had to put back to the, together the iMac, uh, I mean the uh, Mac Mini G4 to uh, put it into target disk mode just to reformat the drive and reinstall everything again. That was not what I'd call fun, um, but the second time around it went really easy and we will probably end up doing a video on how I did it. And this is not exactly what I'd call the most stable install. If you have drives installed and well plugged into this USB port, when you power it on, it will get midway through the boot and crash. So what you have to do is when you power it on, you have to unplug the dock or the, um, the hub here until you see the Apple logo pop back up on the screen and start loading and the second you see that you can plug it back in it won't crash and it will boot right up and everything will show up on the desktop and everything will work usually um, why did I do this well pretty simple I wanted to I thought this would be a really funny really stupid idea and uh, it was definitely stupid <laughs> but it did work um, and it worked a lot better than I was expecting. In fact, we might come back to this sometime soon, depending on how popular this is and stuff. Shoot, I'll probably still film it either way. Because um, this has probably been one of my favorite projects ever to do. And uh, I mean, this thing can still do server things like manage email and all that stuff, which in today's world, the stuff this server suite can do isn't very useful anymore, especially with today's protocols and stuff. But, uh, I mean, we could enable every single service on this and see how fast it bogs the system down. Colin and I have been talking about upgrading the RAM to 512 megs, which would speed everything up a little bit. Um, and it's still got an airport card in it, which means... You can change out the airport card for something else. And you know what I have coming in the mail? Another Exo Braid. Uh, because I need more storage. Long story on that. And it's not exactly the best thing to store all my stuff on, but uh, I'm getting off topic here. I have another Exo Braid. This has a mini PCIe slot in it. Right adapters, we might be able to do fiber. We can actually turn this into a real X serve with an Apple TV stamp on it and barely any horsepower. <laughs> that would be interesting and really, really dumb, but I don't know. Anyway, guys, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, I do now have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. There'll be a link at the end of the video in the description below. And yeah. This has been a Rocky Mods video. See ya.